I tried pottery, I tried making my own paper, I tried sewing, kind of failed at all of them. One of my favorite ways to drink I know a drink, of course, is uh, with my mouth. <laughs> Let's just say toast. That's even better. <laughs> toast! Toast! Hey, hello, and welcome to the show. And this is a show, I mean, I feel like I've got to introduce it. I'm going to assume this is the first time that you've ever seen this, and there are more of them. But since this is your first time, uh, this is a show about f***ing up. It's a show about making mistakes. It's a show about having a big idea or, you know, something you want to impress your mom with, and you decide to go out and do it, and then find out that you have no idea what you're doing. And that's what we talk about on here. And it's about, like, recovery and... You know, like getting back up when you get knocked down. But really, what we're after is, you know, the meaty, the meaty mess up parts. So uh, tonight, we have Christine from uh, Silver and Salt. Uh, it is a uh, jewelry place, a beautiful jewelry. And I'm excited to find out more and excited to find out how she got started doing what she's doing. Let's meet her. Everybody, welcome to the show. I have uh, Christine. Earlier we were going to say Christine, no, which not. is not your. Yeah, we're say that. He <laughs> said your name is Christine. Not. Hey, everybody, welcome to the show. We have Christine with us from Silver and Saul. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your place, about what you do? Oh, well, I'm a jeweler. Um, I have my own jewelry line called Silver and Salt. Um, it's a studio and workshop at Pike Place Market. Very cool. And so I make jewelry and I sell jewelry. Yeah, and you make the jewelry at Pike Place Market. Is I that... do, yeah. 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 My studio and my showroom are all in one space. Oh, so cool. So when Good. you walk in, you can look to the left and see the jewelry, or you can look to the right and see where we make it. Uh, so is it, uh, can I watch you make it? Like yeah. When you're there? Really? Sure. Like behind glass? I can no. just, like, like, oh no. Just right there. It's just right there in the open. Yep. So it's not like the zoo. No, it's not like, like the zoo. Hey, although come here. Yeah, people do come and stand in the window because <laughs> the jewelry benches are right next to the window. So they'll come and they'll stand and stare. Yeah, and um, <laughs> sometimes take pictures. So people, uh, how did you get started? You kind of have to go like way, 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 way back. Perfect. Real far back. All right. Um, uh, when I considered myself, I guess I call myself like a random creative. So I, all I knew, well. Now, see, I have to go way, way back. Keep going. So, yeah, yeah. So I got a degree in English literature. Oh. I got out of college, and I was like, what am I going to do with yeah. this degree in English literature? And it was right at the beginning of the dot-com yeah. boom. Wait, what did you focus on English literature-wise? Like, 19th century British literature. Great. Yeah. This is really so, exciting to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so I'm out of school with this useless degree. That, you know, but was my passion. Um, and it was right at the beginning of the dot com boom. And somehow I got, I sort of fell into working in tech yeah. as a project manager. So English After degree, English degree project, project, manager. project manager. I don't know. Hey, so, I'm an English major. Okay. Yeah, so right. So you know so what I mean, right? I totally know what you mean. My yeah. parents are shocked I have a job now. And if you call this a job, it's yes. It's a job. It's <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I was working in tech. I worked in tech for like, 15, 15 plus years or something like oh, wow. that, doing project management, consulting, managing software development teams. Yeah. And I finally like got to this point where I wanted to make something other than email. Yeah. Like that was, I felt like that was my, <laughs> that my product was like, just, like electronic communication yeah. and task Did you do anything on the side the whole time that you were doing yeah. that? Yeah. So that whole time I was like trying to find my, 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 my calling as a, as a, creative person as yeah. a maker. So I mean, I tried pottery, I tried making my own paper, I tried sewing, I tried wow. painting. I mean, I tried lots of different yeah. things and um, kind of failed at all of them. What was the, what's the, the catalyst to go from, because I gotta assume if you're in software and you're doing project management, that could be a pretty cush gig. Like, yeah, yeah. Mind numbing maybe, yeah, yeah. but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, but it was like, you know, some people can like work to live 
and some people live to work, yeah. you know, right, type of a thing. And I just fall into the category where it's like, if I don't get any kind of personal, like, fulfillment out of what I'm doing, it doesn't really matter how much money you pay me. And I tried for a really long time, you know, to just sort of, like, suck it up and do the job and then come home and, you know, do whatever. But also, at the end of the day, at a job like that, you're just so tired, right? When you get home, it's like, you don't want to really do anything no. else. So... I just had to give it up. Do you remember the moment or the time when you decided, hey, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going to do this instead? Did you start doing a kind of like side mood lighting yeah, thing? Or? Yeah, I kind of did. So um, so I, I <laughs> one of my random creative <laughs> things that I tried for a while was photography. Yeah. that's. A, and I did that for, for a few years at least. You like, make that, that sound... Okay bad a little bit you're well, like ah, i well, did the photography thing only because it's you know co still completely unrelated to jewelry but i yeah. but i so i that was the 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 thing that i did immediately preceding oh getting before it you did that it, what, were jewelry. you still were you still at the software company doing yeah. photography yeah so i was at the stuff. software company i did this 365 day self-portrait project where i took my own photo every single day for a year i only made it 100 days okay that's really impressive yeah right yeah. it's tough right yeah so I did that and I thought, I, you know, once I got through that, I was like, okay, I'm going to be a photographer. I'm going to like, this is, this is going to be my ticket. And I still, <laughs> my ticket. I still yeah. felt like I spent so much time in front of the computer and I was, and I was like, it just, it didn't, once the project was over. all the editing over, and everything else on there. All the editing and, you know, everything was still digital. I tried going, like, tried doing like darkroom photography, but nobody really appreciates no. it because they don't, they see all the digital photography. It's just commoditized now. And yeah, well, because you, know? you do it on the, the, with the paper, the chemicals. Yeah, I was trying the... to do alternative processes, like yeah. what? like collodion and like all these different you know things because i really wanted that like that yeah. like tactile experience of like making something with my hands not just making something with a, you know a i totally camera. got you i was thinking one one plate what wet plate collodion wet plate collodion yeah wet, okay i that's yeah, amazing so yeah. this will tie in later when you're gonna eventually ask me why my company is named silver and salt oh even, even we're gonna get back we're gonna get why back is your to company this. named silver, silver and, and salt, salt. <laughs> So the first photographic prints were called salt prints. The paper was coated with silver um, nitrate and Again. sodium chloride, oh. silver and salt. It was kind of a mistake because do you, can you imagine how many people come into my shop and ask me if there's salt in the jewelry? Oh, I bet a lot of people do. They point to the gemstones and say, Is that salt? Is that salt? <laughs> because it because of its magical healing properties? I mean, I guess you could lick the jewelry if you're dehydrated. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, you could lick the jewelry if you're dehydrated. Yeah. Is that going to get cut? Uh, no. <laughs> That's absolutely making it in. I love the... And in fact, the you saying, is that going to get cut? That needs to stay in too. Yeah. Did photography for so quit your no you were no, still so working. No, so I was still working. I doing was doing photography. photography, and um and then I had an opportunity this 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 um like kind of art gallery shop um came up for sale and I was like ah this now this is my ticket like I'm gonna buy this art gallery and this will be my creative oh. like ticket out of tech. Yeah. Um, and so I did that with a with a with a partner with a business partner. Yeah. And um, that turned out to be like the biggest mistake I think I've ever made in my professional adult life. Perfect setup. We're totally going to get into that. But guess what we're going to do uh, now? Because I can see that Jack's taking Instagram photos of his drink. Uh, we're going to drink. Drink. Yes. That's a good time to drink. Are you? I know. I'm so excited. <laughs> All right. So what are we drinking, Jack? Oh, today I have a lovely drink for you called the Vapor and Stone. <laughs> vapor and stone. stone? Vapor and Stone. Vapor and Stone. Do you have to say it like that? Vapor, vapor and, and Stone. stone. We got a little bit of fire here, some peach wood. I told you there'd be fire. Oh, uh, yeah. Fire is one of my favorite, as you know. So we have uh, Michoacan rum from just outside of Oaxaca in Charandan. 
Done at elevation, just about a mile above sea level in red volcanic soil. And then we have a Woodford Reserve house made peach and black pepper liqueur. Benedictine for some herbal notes. And uh, Dolan Blanc vermouth infused with cedar, tobacco, aromatic bitters. Are you excited? Yeah. Yeah, it's gonna be special good. wood, special wood. It's we, coming like in a do cauldron. We have to, do we have to drink it out of the cauldron? Do we drink it like soup? That would be funny. I do have a soup drink coming up for you some of these days. <laughs> but for now. Oh. oh. Yes. We were both at the same time. No, we don't have to drink it like soup. All right. Um, anything, anything special, a certain method or a way that we should be drinking it? Yeah, one of my favorite ways to drink I know a drink, of say. course, is uh, with my mouth. <laughs> so <laughs> feel free to pick it up with your hand and then place to your lips and slowly yeah. imbibe. You know, I like so. it was a sincere question until it came out of my mouth, and then it was a softball <laughs> for you to be a smart ass. All right, you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. All right. Do you have a, a, a way that you like to toast? T toast? <laughs> Cheers. Let's just say toast. That's even better. <laughs> toast. Toast. <laughs> All right, good. Oh, this salt. Mmm. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's good. Yeah. Yeah. It's smoky because he lit it on fire. <laughs> I'm assuming. Okay. Do you see that there's salt in there? There's a lot of salt in mm -hmm. there. There's salt on our drinks. Yeah. We That's should good. lick it because we're dehydrated. <laughs> <laughs> you got the... So I bought this gallery. You bought a gallery, which by the way, is amazing. Like that's really wonderful. I just wanted to have a space that sold all the things that I loved. So I bought this gallery with this person. Yeah. And um, it was just a terrible mistake. Like we just, we you know, about six months in, we realized that we were not compatible oh, no. in oh, any no. way, shape, or form. We had very different visions. But, you know, when I when I made that move and I decided to do it with a partner, it was because I was scared to try mm. to do it myself, right? I wasn't quite ready to give up my corporate job. I yeah. was, you know, like, I didn't live anywhere near where this particular gallery was located, and she did, so I sort of, thought that like this was this was going to be a good compromise like I could kind of go part way yeah. and dip a toe you know and have this other person sort of supporting and backing me up and stuff but we we were not you know we were we should never have been in business <laughs> together it was like I mean if you looked at at that gallery today and then you went into my store you would see that they are like mm. on completely opposite ends of the design spectrum your I haven't been there, your, your shop now, but I've seen your your website and the way yeah. you present and pictures of it. So it's pretty clean. Clean. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. the setup. Yeah. So I'm going to assume the other one was more like a like a TGIF Fridays type of thing? Well, I or? mean, not quite, but like I, I remember one time I came back from a from a trip, like a vacation early on after we had opened, <laughs> like opened our... Yeah partnership together. Relaxing vacation. It was a relaxing vacation and mm. I walked into the shop and I said, why does it look like a thrift store in here? <laughs> and I think that that was the clue <laughs> that we were in trouble because she, and this was, you know, I, I, I sort of feel bad, you know, when I think about it now. Yeah, yeah. But like, you know, she was, she had done what she thought was great. Mm -hmm. And I walked in and I was like, why does it look like <laughs> Value Village? <It's> <laughs> and, and, you know, but there's just two different styles. It's just two different. And she's a very successful, like she, we had, we went through a whole divorce. Yeah. I mean, it was hell. It was terrible. There were lawyers. Ah. There was, there were, there were, there were lawsuits like you, I mean oh wow because we had to extricate from this like partnership agreement and you yeah. know all of these things it was very so I, incorporated as a partnership yeah we were was? a partnership and like I had personally guaranteed this lease and there was so you know so there was wow there were many yeah. entanglements that we had to then extricate ourselves from and it was very nasty like so it was really negative you go this is it like interesting to me you go through all of that yeah and so 
certainly learned things from going through oh, yeah. that. And, uh, but then you still opened up something else? Like, did something By else myself. again? Well, I know, but like, <laughs> not with some, I don't know, like, it just seems like that would be really exhausting. Yeah. And then, I, I, and maybe I'm, I'm just projecting, because I'm like, oh, yeah, no, then I would be like, all right, corporate gig it is. I'm just going to whip no. it up in some really creative emails and not worry about that because that was too painful. No. Yeah. I mean, I think I didn't I didn't see it that way because I didn't see like the store in and of itself as being painful. I just saw the way that I had approached it as mm. being the wrong approach. So one of the things that I learned from that experience and like being at that shop was that people were coming would come in and they would buy the jewelry like that uh, was, that was like that was the thing that was like the 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 thing that kept the store afloat was yeah. the jewelry and so i said to myself jewelry this is what i need to learn how to make and so i went out and i bought like you know those torches they use you know he just used one for yeah. creme brulee and and stuff like that so when you when you started you started just making it you got uh, a torch and start making it but now I've seen, like I've seen the jewelry that yeah. you have. How did you get from, is it just practice again and yeah, again and again? Like, like practice, YouTube videos? YouTube like videos. Um, I took a couple of like workshops at like some local art schools. And, yeah. um, and I just practice, yeah, just practice and trial and error and, you know, <laughs> just evolve. <laughs> I tried to do like the art fair scene. Yeah. And it is brutal, man. Yeah. It is so brutal. Why is yeah. it brutal? Like what? Because you, you know, you every year you send out all these applications to these art shows and sometimes they take you and sometimes they don't. Oh, and you, you don't like, know why. You have to audition you have for to, art you shows. You have to apply with your photos. I had and no everything. idea. For any given art show, I would guess that. 50% to two thirds of the entries are jewelers. Oh, wow. So it's very competitive. You know, some some years, like I would find that I would get into all the shows that I wanted to get into and I had a great year. And yeah. then the next year I would apply and I would not get in. And I'm like, how can I have any kind of consistency to my business oh, wow. if I am relying on these art show gods to let me in every year. So is this before you decide to do another, you have a brick and mortar now, you have yeah. an actual shop. Yeah, was yeah. this before you decided yes. to do that? This was before oh, wow. I was. I had my shop. Yeah. So when I realized that the art, well, not only are the art shows unreliable in terms of being able to get in, but then you go there, you schlep a hundred and some odd pounds of gear, right? Into these, you've got this tent and you have these tables and all this display and yeah. you have your jewelry and all, you know, and all these things that you have to like set up. And then you sit there for three days and watch people walk by and walk by <laughs> and walk by. And then you watch people come to your booth and you greet them like with hope and enthusiasm and they pick up something and they go, oh. <laughs> You want how much? <laughs> and they put it down, you know, and they walk away and you, it's just like, demoralizing. Don't you know who I am? It's demoralizing. <laughs> like So you gave it up. I gave up art fairs and I I got a um I had a studio in Ballard, but it was in a locked building. So like people could come and see me. Yeah. But they couldn't just walk in. Oh, so you'd have to uh, like by appointment type yeah. of thing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it was like by appointment. Mm -hmm. And then one day I found out about this space that opened up at Pike Place Market and I was like, me, Which is me, huge, me. yeah. Yeah, another artist had just opened up her shop a couple, like about a block away. Yeah. And she recommended me to the landlord um, who was in charge of that particular space and they liked my idea and I was what, in. What did you What did you pitch? Like idea wise, was there something? Um, I just pitched exactly what I'm doing, which is I, I I told them I wanted to have a studio and a showroom in the same space, and I wanted to teach workshops and make you know art accessible and have people be able to see yeah. you know us in action. And they were like, "That's fantastic!" You know, the Pike Place Market is all about meet the maker, right? Yeah. So we're sort of you know the epitome of that. <laughs> One more question. Okay. Um, you, you don't have your day job anymore. No. No, you're too busy for the setup. If you had to give somebody else advice, what type of advice would you give them 
for making the leap into doing something that they really they really care about. Yeah, you know, people ask me this and I feel I feel a little like odd giving advice because I was really fortunate because I have the support of my husband, right, to help mm. make this work. You that know? still counts as advice. You could be like, find somebody. somebody who, who, right? <laughs> okay, like, you need a sugar daddy. <laughs> if you can find yourself a good sugar daddy, then you're you're golden. But I mean, I think what what boils down to is before you make that leap, you you have you have to have a safety net of mm. some sort. So whether that means that you like give up your daily Starbucks or whatever and squirrel away as much money as you can, or like mm -hmm. try and you know like just to kind of give yourself like you you need some some runway mm -hmm. um, financially I think before before you can do it with confidence the other thing is um, have like like you have to have like courage in and feel confident in yourself so mm -hmm. like when I made my initial you know steps and I made so many mistakes, I think it was because I was not confident in myself and I didn't think that I had like, that I could do it. Mm -hmm. I didn't think I could do it on my own. I didn't think I was talented enough or had enough ideas or like all of those different things. And so it led me to try to do these like half measures. Mm -hmm. And um, and it just doesn't, it just didn't work, you know, yeah. because art is, is, is a endeavor of like passion and commitment mm -hmm. and courage and all of those things. And if you're not there in your life, then you, it, it's going to be really hard to be successful. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for having uh, me. It was wonderful having you. All right. Uh, toast. Toast. <laughs> toast. <laughs> That's so good. Thank you, Christine, for being on the show. And if you like, what you saw and you want to hear from more people like Christine uh, who make you know non-permanent things to show their love to people in the world then subscribe ring the bell do all those fancy things and if you have your own f up and you would like to be on the show go to fups.com maybe we'll see you